Hey guys, it's Thursday. Let's get off the rails. <laughs> let's let's roast some people. Um, no, nah, we use our powers for good around here. I told you all yesterday about uh, CJ, my girlfriend. My girlfriend. I just like the way that rolls off the tongue. My girlfriend. I got a girlfriend. And uh, she's been around for a long time now. I don't know. I guess she's still a girlfriend. Told you yesterday about how she went to the salon and they wouldn't honor the gift card after they said they would. And, uh, well, women be women, man. And God forbid you cross a woman with a big social media following. <laughs> she immediately made a live video about the debacle. And uh, she immediately got a call from the manager who uh, gave the full gift card back. And uh, I said, what did she say? She said she was so sorry. <laughs> I bet she was. You know, I made a post on social media the other day. I went to a restaurant, and uh, I, I'm about tired of these restaurants, the service industry, all of them, who just, all of it just so lackadaisical in the, their pursuit of anything good, much less excellent. And it drives me crazy how bad service has become. I, again, it was already going downhill. Then COVID hit and everybody started getting paid for doing nothing, sitting on their asses and, you know, watching Netflix and door dashing and playing video games, whatever they're doing. And now, man, you can't get anything. It's, and so I, I've, I've started calling it out. I really have. I've started calling it out. If, if you're not going to do the right thing, did y'all see the clip? And this thing's gone viral. I shared it of the, uh, the, the family. There was a bunch of women and children who come up to that big pumpkin on Halloween and they're just oh. scarfing out the, the yeah. candy, the candy bars yeah, and now stuff. A lot of people were saying those were immigrants. I couldn't really tell. You know, I, like, I see where people might say that. There are some, there are some uh, skin tones there. Yeah. But, but, but again, my brain doesn't work that way, believe it or not, contrary to the accusations I receive. <laughs> my brain doesn't say, oh, you know what? These people are from Venezuela. Yeah. I just saw treacherous ass thieving people who, uh, <laughs> who are just grabbing everything in the bucket. And I mean, just filling it up. You know, yeah. they, the people, like they, ruin the, they ruin it for everybody, man. Yeah, we used to have the decency where you would take most of it if they left it unguarded but you don't empty <laughs> you don't empty the clip you like know? when your bag was full you started putting more in the kids bag yeah like we're all leaving here full yeah, and i mean those like, were I'll big take, candy bars too i'll clean out like 75 percent if you're gonna leave it unguarded you made that decision <laughs> but i'm not gonna well, take all of it it's one thing to engage in uh sophomoric or juvenile behavior but these were adults. Yeah, I think that with was children. Kind of, that was kind of what made it bad. If the kids do it, you're like, ah, they couldn't help themselves. We but live what, in a world though that everybody thinks they're owed something. Yeah, when four grown women empty the empty the container, then it's like, yeah. look, ladies, you guys are always already kind of fat. You might want to <laughs> not eat all that candy. You know. You know, I alluded to uh, talking about fat. I alluded to. Uh, oh, should I get into that yet? We're off the rails. Why not? Um, <laughs> did you see uh, Lauren Chen's video, her reaction video to the to the uh, morbidly obese woman who was teaching people, fat people, how to take a shower? <laughs> no. Like, if you go to your boyfriend's house, <laughs> don't get mad because his shower ain't like yours at home. Like a, like a tutorial to, like, actually... Well, she was telling men, like, if you're going to date a fat woman, uh -huh. here's what you need in your shower. <laughs> You got to look it up. It's Lauren Chen's reaction video. And, of course, Lauren caught a lot of crap. I love Lauren, by the way. But Lauren, Lauren, uh, she stirs the pot. She really does. Y'all think I'm bad. Lauren, she, she stirs it up and doesn't care. Uh, but I love Lauren. I know her personally. She's a sweetheart of a person. And she just knows how to get people's goat. And, like, I personally enjoy that. Just because people take it so damn seriously. Nobody's trying to offend you personally. They're just putting it out there, and everybody just get, gets offended, so she doubles down on it. So anyway, she shared this video. It, it was a fat girl who was showing boys, if you're going to date a fat girl, this is what you need in your shower. Like, you need the, uh, the shower wand that's on the hose, you know, and it needs to be an extra long hose, 
And she was like, you got to pull your belly up and hose under there. Like, re- and she said, you got to really pull it up and then get in the rolls over here. It's like, okay, I don't know why y'all are mad at Lauren. If, if the person's going to make that video, we're going to laugh at it because it's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird, too, because being fat is one of those things where, like, if you have to do a tutorial on how to take a shower because yeah. you're that fat, like, it should be self-evident. But not even that, not on how to take a shower, what your boyfriend should have in his shower when you go over there. Because she started off, she said, first of all, don't be mad because his shower ain't like yours at home. Yeah. And like, and like, okay, that's, that's, that's ridicule worthy. Yeah. It's not ridiculing a person for being fat because there's all types of reasons that people are fat. Now, we live in America where, by and large, 99% of the people out there that are fat are because they have a terrible diet and an unhealthy lifestyle and they are lazy. They don't move. Uh, we are a morbidly obese society. Th- that in and of itself should be ridicule worthy. I'm not saying somebody has a thyroid problem or some kind of medical condition. Everybody, if you listen to them, everybody's got a damn medical condition. That's how they excuse, that's how they excuse, you know, their, their weight issues. But dadgummit, when they call you on the phone, you can hear them ordering that Big Mac at the drive-thru, you know, hang on a minute. I got to hang on. Yeah, it's going to be a, I'm going to supersize that. Yeah. Uh, Let me have a large on that and uh, throw, throw uh, an apple pie in there too. All right. I'm back. I hear that on the phone with some people. Yeah. I've always said there's a reason why people get fat. I know because I've I've spent a lot of my adult life right there. <laughs> I've been I've been fat. I've been functionally fat, uh, and I know why. It's because of the times when I get lazy and I eat bad. But no, she was doing that whole deal, and I and I remember I was talking yesterday about the military how they've lowered their standards, and how uh, they post that picture of the lesbians with the pride flag. And they were all overweight, and they're in they're in military fatigues, they're in they're in army fatigues. And I think it was Chaya Rishik with libs of TikTok who said, "Caption this." Now back behind them, they were on a base, they were on a military base because they had one of those, you know, how those places will display, you know, an artillery gun or a, or a helicopter mounted on a pole or a tank out in the field or whatever. This one had a helicopter in the back. And I forget what my caption was, but it was all these lesbians and then the helicopter in the background. I said, well, at least something in this picture can still helicopter, which was my reference to something having a penis. And the lesbians don't. And they were holding a pride flag, which, of course, included every variation of trans and gender and blah, 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 blah. I thought it was funny. Uh, But I'll tell you something. I like this. uh, I like this Mike Johnson guy. He's not fat or lesbian. But he is Speaker of the House. And uh, I retweeted this yesterday. This was, um, let me get back over to it. Sarah loves to call this dead air. I don't care. This ain't the radio, man. We know what we're doing. Matt Fuller. Matt Fuller, who is um, the Washington Bureau Chief for the Daily Beast. Um, That ought to tell you everything you need to know. He's got an article with Daily Beast. He says, uh, Mike Johnson... Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, doesn't have any retirement savings, own a single stock, or have any assets at all. He has less than $5,000 in his bank account. He's got a $250,000 to $500,000 mortgage, a home equity loan, and a personal loan. So what's his retirement plan? To lobby? He goes on. He says, I get that most Americans are in a similar boat. I'm not a rich man. But when the speaker has zero savings at 51, it's an indication that his financial literacy is, uh, let's just say, that's how you offset $14 billion in Israel funding and end up costing the government $90 billion. Uh, When he tweeted that out, I retweeted it, and I said, so he's a normal American instead of a permanent Washington insider trading globalists like most of D.C. Got it. I like him even more now. Sounds to me like Mike Johnson represents you, the average American. Most of you probably watching or listening to this show, you don't own a single stock either. You might not have $5,000 in the bank. Uh, You might not have a retirement plan. Believe it or not, most Americans out there these days, they don't, unless they're some kind of employer-funded 401k or something of that nature. Because again, a lot of people haven't done that. They haven't taken care of their future. 
uh, for one reason or another. Sometimes life happens. When you have people buying groceries off of a credit card that's now at a 33% interest, it's kind of hard to get on top of things. That's the world we've created. Thanks, Joe Biden. I mean, we've got incredible spending, incredible inflation. Contrary to what uh, Janet Yellen said, that, um, that it was just transitory. It was going to go away. Well, it's not. It's here to stay. It's here. And now we're, we're talking about fighting a war with China, with Russia, with Iran, funding Ukraine, funding Israel. How many other endeavors we get ourselves into? It's a debacle. Maybe we'll soon be funding Taiwan. <clears throat> and we can't afford it. And so that's his criticism. Now, he could have uh, taken the resources of Daily Beast, and he could have uh, maybe done a little investigation on Matt Fuller on the private funds, the stocks, the retirement, the income, the savings accounts of, let's say, uh, how about Joe Biden? Joe Biden, who's continually getting $100,000, $200,000 check reimbursements, so quote unquote, from his brother. Um, how about all that money coming into them? How about Joe Biden, who joked around, uh, you know, about influence peddling when he talked about, well, I'll be a son of a bitch. <laughs> Remember that clip out there about you got six hours before that, that deal, that guy's fired and you're not getting the billion dollars. Well, son of a bitch, he fired the guy. I mean, why don't we investigate that guy a little bit instead of a guy like Mike Johnson who, uh, <laughs> who's, who represents every other American out there? I'll tell you why. I'm going to tell you why they don't investigate Joe Biden for something like that. Because Joe Biden, back where I come from, we used to say uh, he, he'd, uh, he'll run with any dog that'll hunt. Joe Biden, will, he'll, take, he'll, he'll go with anybody that's paying him or whatever. Uh, they tell him to do. He'll run with any dog that'll hunt. But see, a guy like Mike Johnson, you can't control a guy like that. What have they been attacking Mike Johnson on? Now they're going to come after his personal finances. But what have they been attacking him about? They've been talking about his worldview. They've been talking about his faith. Um, I mean, tons of backlash. The, um, you know, he was an attorney, and he, uh, you know, CNN unearthed certain comments after he became speaker. Nobody knew who Mike Johnson was. Nobody cared. I mean, unless you're from Louisiana. Uh, but they said his anti-gay rhetoric was harsh. There it is. It's always the gay stuff. Uh, well, I mean, based on when he said it, it was pretty normal rhetoric for the time. Uh, he says, I'm a rule of law guy. I made a career defending the rule of law. I respect the rule of law. When the Supreme Court issued the... Uh, Oberfell opinion, that became the law of the land. Uh, but also genuinely love all people regardless of their lifestyle choices. This is not about the people themselves. I'm a Bible-believing Christian. Ding, 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 ding. That's where you get in trouble, Mike. Someone asked me today in the media, they said, it's curious, people are curious, what does Mike Johnson think about any issue under the sun? I said, well, go pick up a Bible off your shelf and read it. That's my worldview. That's what I believe, so I make no apologies for it. That's my personal worldview. And they are attacking him. Let me tell you, when they start attacking a person's faith, their worldview, their personal ideas, their opinions, on, on those kind of bases, and then you're going to attack his bank accounts and how many stocks he owns, I'm sorry he doesn't line up to the criteria of, let's say, a former Speaker of the House named Nancy Pelosi and her insider trading. I, I mean, that's when you know they're threatened by a guy. They are threatened they got to start pulling up the personal, what did, what did they do with Donald Trump? He said he grabs him by the pussy. Said he grabs him by the pussy. The vagina. When they got to come after you over stuff like that, that's when it's a character assassination and they got nothing. They'll never do that with a guy like Joe Biden until they're done with Joe Biden. But right now he's a useful idiot, a useful puppet, and they'll never do that with him. So we'll see what happens with old uh, Mike Johnson. But right now I kind of like where the guy stands. Mike, if you need a loan, call me. I got. I send you another five grand. <laughs> Probably illegal. I don't even know anymore. Oh, guys, guys, guys. Birch Gold. We're up against another government shutdown. It's coming, coming. You, you say when? It's coming. Trust me. It's gonna happen. They're always gonna talk about stuff like that because again, they can't figure out this spending thing. And you know what they can't figure out? They can't figure out why the dollar is so weak these days. They can't. You know what these other countries are doing? 
they're putting their money in gold and they're solidifying what they have, their resources in gold. Do you realize you can do that too? You can diversify your money into gold as well. Birch Gold Group will help you do that. When you open up a gold IRA for every $10,000 you spend by December 22nd, Birch Gold will send you a free gold bar. That's cool. Just text CHAD, I spell it Chad, to 989898. Claim eligibility before Black Friday. Birch Gold can help you convert an existing IRA or 401k into a gold IRA for no money out of pocket, and you still get the free gold bars. So don't let your savings become a victim of the further devaluation of the dollar. Don't be like Mike Johnson. Don't be like the Speaker of the House. Text CHAD to 989898. Receive a free info kit on gold. Claim your eligibility before Black Friday to receive your free gold bars on your qualified purchase. Hang tight. We'll be right back. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Uh, We always like to bring uh, comedian friends on and uh, folks that have some funny stuff going on uh danny polishuk welcome to the show brother how are you man hey i'm well i'm well thanks for having me <laughs> you you uh i always i always get fascinated by these uh zoom call or skype call backgrounds that are I'm there i'm trying to center myself in this thing but i'm like <laughs> now you're good you're, you're produ- oh, okay. you're good uh follow him on on x at danny jokes and uh Danny, you're in New York, man, and I know you're in New York because of the comedy scene, and a lot of people do that. They'll go to yeah. L.A., Chicago, New York. How, how? Let's say post-COVID, through COVID, all that garbage, let's just say this crazy world we're living in, how is the comedy scene doing in New York? Is it still kind of a mecca everybody's uh, trying to get to? Yeah, yeah. I, I, if anything, actually, New York's become better because mm. all, everybody from LA is moving here now. Like, I think the Austin stuff kind of ruined LA a bit for comedy. That's true. And because uh, all the people who are like, you know, I could never move to New York, all the comics are like, how do you do it? And now they're all showing up all of a sudden because LA is just not that great anymore. And I mean, you know, there's like an acting strike. So if you did that, there's no work. And there was like a writer strike, and so many people move there for that. And so. Yeah, people are people are kind of jumping ship on, on LA, but New York's great for comedy. It, I mean, I only moved here four months before COVID. Yeah, so <laughs> so yeah. I, didn't, I, I didn't get a really great taste of what it was like previous, but uh, yeah. it's good. When I was, when, you know, I was in LA a lot because they were want, I was writing and and they were wanting me to you know pitch sitcoms and stuff like that. They were trying to get me to move to LA. Thank God I didn't because that was right before yeah. the world shut down. I would I wasn't going to do it. There was no way. Uh, I was going to move out no. there. So I can see where Austin's kind of messed up that because Austin, I tend to forget that it's kind of become a comedy mecca as well in regards to that. Um, all this yeah. stuff, all oh, this yeah. stuff that's going on, all this stuff's going on with the Middle East and Israel and stuff like that. I know you're, you're good at making the jokes about all the, I mean. Oh, yeah, I, I, I've been cranking them out. <laughs> I mean, I love it, dude. I mean, like, I love that there's just nothing off limits in regards to that. Um are, are you seeing any? Are you seeing any like protests or any kind of crazy shit popping off as far as like, things like, in New York? Like literal. Oh hell yeah, yeah. yeah. Really? I mean, our stu- like I did the boys cast with Ryan Long and uh, our podcast, and our studio is near Madison Square Garden. So mm. you know there, there's protests out there. We actually saw the other night. Me and him were doing a Brooklyn Comedy Club, and we saw an in the wild like in person. Uh, someone tearing down one of the hostage posters and then the other person like yelling at them and the like it was like t- midnight or something on like a friday night and this one person's like you colonizer like yelling like you're a colonizer and the person's like you're disgusting and they're yelling we're just watching from across see the I, i'm starting to wonder i'm starting to see those videos like that and i'm starting to wonder if they're putting up these hostage missing person posters just to sit in the bushes and see if they can ambush them when somebody walks totally. by and rips them off just to get the videos you know I, I don't know. I honestly, I don't. There was a part of me like I was trying to think about like a funny thing to do or, around those videos. The closest I came was we have a friend, and I, I wanted to make a fake poster that instead of says kidnapped, it says wow. kidnapper. No, but it says kidnapper, <laughs> and then with my friend's photo on it, and then put the exact poster, and then put it up, and then someone would just tear it down, being like they just assume, and then I'd be like, hey, what are you doing? This guy's like a dangerous kidnapper. Why are you tearing down this poster? This but is- I was like. <laughs> Like but no, this like, is man, I might have to, yeah. This is literally the dog napper. This is the guy who's taking. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, my exactly, god. Yeah, exactly right. And then, but then I'm like, I might have to wait outside like all day to get this, like you know, to actually get one of these. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. 
<laughs> have those little have those little tear off phone numbers at the bottom, you know. Yeah. If anybody yeah, 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 if anybody's yeah. looking for this guy, no, I uh, you you got a great podcast, man, and the jokes are funny, and uh, it, it's tons of stuff. Are you try Are you getting out of New York very much? You traveling around the country, or are you just um, kind of staying put? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mostly stay put, but I, I get out a bit. Like, um, I got some. Uh, dates coming up uh i haven't i haven't like solidified them yet but i'll be uh some canadian dates we're actually me and ryan are both from canada yeah uh but i got some canadian dates and some some u.s dates coming up yeah at what point in time gonna... do you, at what point in time do you think uh like are you one of those uh nothing's off limits joke writers i mean yeah. are you one of those guys yeah see i appreciate that yeah i mean the thing is is like i have like you know me and ryan like we do a podcast like we're not we don't get a check from anybody like from some company we're not like you know we, we've kind of been like this for long enough where it's not like there's anybody who is like oh we're like maybe gonna think about hiring you for like our show <laughs> so we're just we're so far removed from any of that in like the industry we're like we just say whatever we want yeah you know? like See, that's why I wonder, I wonder if a guy like Shane Gillis, you know, because all that stuff came back to haunt him as soon as he got on Saturday Night Live. And, and, yeah. and like, I wonder, like, does that ever cross your mind? It's like, oh, maybe I should go back and tweak some nah, tweets. I, too far gone at this point. Yeah. I'm like, what am I going to delete all my tweets ever? And also, it worked out great for him. It, it could it, not. That could not have worked out better. Yeah, I mean, he's top of the world at this point. So I, I look yeah. at stuff like that because I'm one of those guys. Tell me how you are. Like I, I don't. I don't believe in apologizing for jokes. You know, just no. do it and just remain unapologetic. If you had anybody to try to come at you, and if you dealt with any of the cancel culture or anything like that. Oh, uh, I mean, I got my YouTube recently demonetized yeah. for life. Um, I had my Instagram suspended like basically not like i got kicked off instagram but i think it was like a i don't know what was going on but like i got basically banned from instagram twice in the same week but then i got it back <laughs> both times yeah. but they said it was for like i don't know what it was for so i don't know if i had a video where someone like was just people were mad about it or something and then they were just trying to mass like flag me but i mean i look everything i put out like you can go look is there's some degree of people who either think it's real because i post post stuff and like people on the internet like some people can't tell the difference between fake and real things. Yeah, that's true. You know, so then they'll, they'll just, so then people are like mad about whatever. They'll be like, I get a lot of like, this is tasteless. And yeah. Like, you know, what can you do? I, <laughs> I dude, just, like, I get that. I get that all the time. You're not the person we thought you were, or, you know, you've developed a dirty mouth. I'm like, I didn't develop it. It's been there. It's just, you're just now coming along to it, you know, and hearing. Yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I like, I don't know. I, I everybody has an opinion on on the internet, you know. So <laughs> I, honestly, I think if you put something out and every person likes it, you're like, uh, there's something going weird going on. Like I would, yeah, that's true. I'm not, I'm not going for a hundred percent consensus. Do, but isn't it weird that everything, no matter what, like I, I thought to myself, like if I could go back to 2014, would I even start of started of making? Would I have started making political jokes? But now we live in a world where everything is politicized. I mean, do you, yeah. do you do you find like I'm just gonna stay away from politics, or I'm just gonna go for it and just jump in wherever I want to go? No, that's that's mostly I think what I talk. It's funny because like I had some stuff like we were doing um, like when we were still living in Toronto, like in Canada and stuff. Like we would do jokes about like the pronoun stuff. Yeah. Like, but it was like 2016, and I remember like at the time people were like, "What are you talking about?" Right. Like we were so early on some of that stuff that people were literally like what are you even talking about like we have no idea and i remember we were like are we crazy for talking about this stuff and then we just kind of did but no i mean we tend to like especially with our podcasts and all our stuff it's you know like all my videos recently have been related to the israel palestine stuff and i don't know i just tend to gravitate towards that stuff yeah and well i, I think you're gonna have material for quite a while um i don't <laughs> yeah. think that's going away any anytime soon uh did you see did you see the guy we talked about it on my show yesterday uh the the guy who's whatever he's in the restaurant and he's pissed off because every waiter or waitress keeps saying sir to him and he's talking about how it hurts him in his oh, heart and yeah. he's filming every yeah, one yeah. of them have you seen that deal yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, that. I'm like, I'm like, dude, you're setting this the whole thing up just to get the clicks and the likes, and the you're basically building a following off of being victimized, but it's manufactured yeah, oppression. I, yeah, I don't get how you get everybody consistently. I mean, obviously, like, it's 
I don't know. I don't know where it was filmed where like that happened where you can just get that so many times. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Basically, basically setting them up for the whole deal. I uh, but keep making the jokes, dude. I, I appreciate I appreciate the humor and you guys. I mean, y'all have to follow uh, at Danny Jokes. I mean, he's got the video yeah. out there and or the videos, I should say, and and yeah, s- yeah. S- some of the music. I mean, is the the recent uh, the video that you did on uh, the being Ar- Jewish the Arab Sandler one? Yeah, the Adam, yeah. yeah Arab Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> that one was like. That was the first video that I made in a very long time where I actually texted people and I go like, am I crazy for putting this out? Is this insane? Yeah. And some people are like, well, like my whole YouTube, that, that that video on YouTube, everybody's like, how is this like Mark Dice? You know him? He's yeah. like, how is this on YouTube? Like I, all these people are like, how is this possibly on YouTube? And I'm like, I don't know if it's because I got demonetized. So they give you like a little more of a pass. And it, yeah. in the title, it says parody like multiple times <laughs> just to like make it. Because I'm like, this is a joke, everybody. So parody, Arab Sandler, <laughs> parody. <laughs> Basically, it's a parody twice and like, caps exclamation marks and like just a joke <laughs> that's funny just, stuff. like jokes that's funny stuff well i'm encouraging everybody go follow him on twitter check him out on youtube he's demonetized so hell follow him on venmo too uh <laughs> all the places he's, a, he's, a, he's in new york he's starving to death up there trying to tell jokes so uh yeah, danny polish chuck eating rats soon bring it on dude hey don't get covid yeah. don't get don't get uh, aids or anything like that but you're not in la yeah. so you're probably safe Nah, so, nah, I'll be okay. All right. Well, brother, thanks for coming <laughs> on, man. And we'll get yeah, you back on soon, bro. Take care of yourself. Yeah, absolutely. See you yeah, soon. Well. Hey, guys, you know, since the uh, early days uh, here at The Blaze, we've been fortunate to work with the folks over at Relief Factor. They got that. At the time, it was an unknown anti-inflammatory that they brought to the marketplace. They tested it out up in Seattle, their hometown, and it showed a remarkable ability to reduce people's pain. And I got rid of their chronic ailments. I use Relief Factor because it's an all-natural alternative to pain medications that I trust to keep me pain-free. You know, inflammation, it's not only the chief cause of pain, but it's also the factor in many other diseases. And so Relief Factor will actually work, hopefully, to keep your inflammation markers in check. There's hundreds of thousands of people. They order Relief Factor every month. 70% go on to reorder it because it works for them. I've got you a trial pack. You can get it for $19.95 if you go to relieffactor.com or call them on the phone, 800-4-RELIEF. That's 800, the number four, relief. Go to relieffactor.com. Feel the difference. We'll be right back. You know, I guess the Daily Beast just expects all of us to become lobbyists when our since I mean, COVID wiped out a lot of people's businesses and savings. So, you know, he accused Mike Johnson. I guess he's going to be a lobbyist. <laughs> I guess that's what all of us that lost our savings, you know. A lot of folks out there, man. Um, you know, I want you guys to keep your head on a swivel. I want you to be more aware than you've ever been before. You've heard me talking about um, open borders. You know about it. You probably know more than I do, honestly. But you've heard me talk about the numbers, the gotaways, the people that are here. We've seen them bust to the interior of the country. They're in all of our major cities. They're, in, they're, they're everywhere at this point, not just in the cities. Uh, but I want you to keep your head on a swivel because we live in a time where, as um, you know, the, our own Department of Justice, our FBI, has said, yeah, we probably there's a good chance there's going to be a terrorist attack on our soil very soon, sooner than later. And I don't want you to take for granted. I want you to think about things you do, you know, before you take off, go to the ball game, take off, go to the concert, take off into the airport without any thought in mind, without, you know, I mean, for instance, you ever go in the airport, I mean, you ever look around you and, and say, hey, what would happen if suddenly something popped off? If you go to the airport, let me just give you a practical scenario here. You go to the airport and I'm in an airport all the time. You know what I, I do? I try to get through security as fast as I can whether it's TSA pre, whether I pick the shortest line, uh, use clear, whatever. People have their opinions about clear because you're giving your information away. Get through security as quick as you can because if somebody's going to detonate a suicide vest, guess where they're going to do it? They're going to do it before they get to security. Before there's a potential of encountering somebody that's armed, they're going to do it. They'll run into the ticketing area, the baggage area, They'll run into the the security line area, scream, you know, Allahu Akbar, and they'll detonate. You want to get through, and if you do hear somebody scream that, you want to get as low as you possibly can, preferably behind something. 
Now, that's real world right there. That's the way a lot of people in the world have to live because they know that those you know, real threats exist. Well, they're here in America now. And you need to keep your head on a swivel. And, you know, I'm not just saying that somebody, of a, some, some Islamicist is going to come in and do that. It could be a lot of things that could happen. We saw what happened in Maine with this shooter in the bowling alley. We've heard the news stories, and you think it's not going to happen to me, not going to happen in my community, not going to happen here. Well, when it all goes south to the degree that I'm talking about because of who is now in our country— and as Christopher Ray says, we have uh, basically an imminent situation where a terrorist attack is going to come. It's going to be more than just a single active, crazy, mentally ill shooter. Uh, these are going to be, this would be a targeted attack. This would be something that is coordinated strategically, something that is planned out, something where your escape routes are possibly cut off, your supplies are limited, um, where the things that you need have been um, have been eliminated and you don't have that kind of plan I, I don't know if you do or not but i'd suffice to say that most americans don't because we've lived in a false sense of security and comfort thinking that somebody is always going to be there to take care of us well that's simply not true simply not true so whether it's the vehicle you drive the guns in your safe or in your closet uh, the ammunition in the box, the, the food storage you have, the ability to create fire, the ability to get clean water. Um, all of those things are essential, man. And I'm going to encourage you guys from the bottom of my heart, don't wait another day. I'm not selling you anything, um, although we've given you resources for that. Be aware. Keep your head on a swivel. Guys, let's run over to uh, a clip here. And uh, I want us to play clip number five, please. Let's bring that one on you. Clip number five. As the world's largest state sponsor of terrorism, the Iranians, for instance, have directly or by hiring criminals mounted assassination attempts against dissidents and high-ranking current and former U.S. government officials, including right here on American soil. And along those lines, Hezbollah, Iran's primary strategic partner has a history of seeding operatives and infrastructure, obtaining money and weapons, and spying in this country going back years. Now, remember what I told you in the last few weeks. Remember what I told you about Hezbollah and their influence in Venezuela. The majority of migrants that are coming to our southern border are coming up from Venezuela. Hezbollah has been actively involved in Venezuela for quite some time, particularly in the human trafficking uh, industry. Um, they have funded, they have headquartered, they have held out, they've been there, they have uh, indoctrinated, they have brainwashed, they have whatever, uh, and now they've sent them to our southern border, Hezbollah. So I don't really care for Chris Ray. I don't really care for the FBI, but... Um, I think they're starting to uh, to say what we've always said, and that is these things exist. They're here, and they're coming our way. So that's fun. Woo. Uh, so, so much exciting things to be living. I mean, look, you, you don't want to be at a concert uh, and, and have happened to you what happened to um, the folks there October 7th there in Israel at a music festival. I was watching video just the other day of the, um, of the Vegas shooting. Isn't it interesting that the Vegas shooting just whew, it's gone? It's nothing yeah, else. funny how that happened. Largest um, one in American history, and FBI just kind of shrugged their shoulders and said, we yeah. don't know why he did it. Yeah. Like, okay. And okay. I mean, I, I've got my theories on what happened. I, we all do. But again, wouldn't it be nice if Christopher Ray? come out and say well hey here's the findings of of this or that but you'll never know you'll never know uh but people lost their lives uh and it was a tragedy and they were just at a music concert and bullets start raining down on top of them so we live in a world where that's a reality now uh well we got to get rid of these guns hey yeah yeah I mean, that dude brought 1,200 pounds of firearms into that hotel room, supposedly. 
I mean, going to fire that many shots and, and uh, you know, to the point where your barrel would melt. And uh, what was their solution? Well, we're going we're gonna to limit the rights of American people. We're going to get rid of uh, bump stocks. That was their solution. Going to get rid of bump stocks, the ability to fire something quickly. So, again, something happens probably at their behest. You know who? The, the, uh, the alphabet agencies. And they're going to punish the American people. So, again, what's the solution? It's not less guns. I say it's more guns. I say everybody needs to stay strapped. Everybody needs to be armed. You need to be prepared. You need to be ready to go uh, in a moment's notice. You need to go to the range, and you need to hear other people shooting um, because you need to know what the sound of gunfire sounds like. You, you need to be aware of certain things like that. It's very concussive. It's very shocking. Uh, you hear it in your soul when that gun goes off. Most of us are used to hearing it with ear protection. Uh, it will shock your world. You're not expecting that. If you're in the Walmart or the Target or wherever it is you're shopping and you hear that sound, I promise you it, it is going to put you into a state of immediate fear and shock. You need to prepare yourself for things like that. Because, again, it's not just you. you got others around you. you got children. you got grandchildren, all these people. You need to protect yourselves. You need to be aware of everything, everything, everything in this world these days. And, again, I'm not a fear monger, but I am one for being vigilant and prepared, guys. So don't say I didn't tell you. Uh, well, we can keep on getting comforted, though, in uh, sports. Uh, our, it's It's – one of the little fun little pastimes we have as Americans to be able to enjoy our sports. The NFL is in midseason. College football is going on. And uh, some of you like to bet on them. Some of you like to place a little, you know, a little bet here and there. And if you're going to do that, try our friends over at BetDSI.com. Uh, BetDSI is where you can make a little extra money, have a little fun doing it. Our audience will get 120% bonus match with your first deposit. That's double your money if you use promo C-H-A-D-120, Chad120. So you can bet on the NFL, NBA, MMA. You can even bet on politics uh, and get paid for being smart. <laughs> if you want the opportunity to win big money, go to BetDSI.com. Use promo code CHAD120. You can bet on the 2024 elections. Uh, BetDSI has been a leader in the industry for over a decade. Happy to have them on the show. BetDSI.com, promo code CHAD120, CHAD120. Please remember to bet responsibly. We'll be right back. I, uh, I posted that clip of those women and children stealing everything, all the Halloween candy. <laughs> that thing got 10,000 reactions in an hour on Instagram. Um, that's crazy, crazy stuff. People are, people are really uh, they're passionate about the holiday. <laughs> sugar will kill you people yeah sugar will kill you sugar's the worst thing very funny about a fat narcissist <laughs> chris christie yeah it's a odd uh, that's a, uh, i feel like that's a modern character like fat people used to be in the circus now they're on tiktok telling you how your boyfriend needs a bigger shower <laughs> 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 and you know what, man? I'll tell you what. You 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 say anything about people being fat, they'll jump your ass real quick. Yeah, they freak out. Again, it's one it's I've been thinking about this recently because it's just you can have a lot of things wrong with you, but being fat is one of those things that's visible. Like you there's no way to deny it. You yeah. can see it. You, you can, can feel it. Yeah. It but And you're gonna catch judgment for it. Listen, I listen, yeah. I hate being overweight. I hate it. That's why I've worked my ass off. For the yeah. last six, seven months to at least be comfortable with my weight. Yeah, well, and there's some be a little pudgy is okay, but we're yeah. talking like, damn fat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've never had to go through what we go through. Yeah, it, I actually have. Yeah. And I work my ass off to, to try to fix that. Um, and who knows, I may go through it again. We'll see, because I do <laughs> love McDonald's. Thanksgiving is coming up. Thanksgiving's coming, and I'm going to eat it. I have been hungry a lot lately. Whew, it's good. I love good food. Um, <clears throat> but, um, yeah, I, I was thinking, and, and, and it's funny how uh, I was looking at the Halloween pictures of, like, CJ and all. Just, I, just, I look at all these group pictures, you know. People go to the concerts, whatever, all these group pictures. And girls, 
Girls are funny. Like, why do they squat for the pictures? Why do they always bend over and touch their knee and lean forward? You notice that? It's a it's fascinating like, question. I don't know. It's like there, there's nobody behind you. I assume it's an evo- like something in biology. We evolved to where <laughs> that was the safest position. I don't. It just. And why do they squat and lean forward? And it's like you ever notice that that girls group themselves like like a mouthful of teeth. All the skinny ones are in the front, and then they get wider <laughs> as they get, get up to the edge. I assume like they're, you the go work- from the bicuspids, the incisors, to the molars. Yeah, they self sort almost. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, you know you bigger. Get on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> you know you're, you you got to guard our flanks. This, We're being mean. Yeah, We're well, being you mean. When you're on the outside of the picture, you got to go, you know, hit the treadmill a little. <laughs> you got a big girl with little skinny legs, yeah. you know. Got them normal size legs and a big girl up top look like a wisdom tooth. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, send your hate mail to the blaze. Uh, blaze it, blaze something. Uh, or just go leave a rating and a review, five stars, because you laughed. You laughed. Laugh at yourself. Stop it. Don't take yourself so damn seriously. Um, hey, listen, I, I'm bald. <laughs> Look at this head right here. Look at that. What are you going to do with this? Look at that head. Oh, there's your screenshot right there. Look at that little bald spot up there. You know what? I can't help that either. But am I ashamed of it? Yes, that's where I wear a cowboy hat. The cowboy hat's actually why I'm bald. <laughs> well, at least you're not out here being like, no, bald is beautiful. Yeah, it's not beautiful. That's why I keep the hat on. Yeah. That's why I wear clothes that fit. But yeah, look at that. I got a little bald spot up there. Got my little ring. Got my little ring up there. I ain't scared of nothing. No, that's an ugly shot, George. That was mean. <laughs> go back to the go back to it. Look at that thing. Look at that bald spot. Boy, that's wisdom right there. I should shave it all off again. I've done the bald thing. I got the head for it. I just don't have the face for it. You go get the Michael Jordan? Yeah. (laughs) That's a pain in the ass to have to keep shaving your head, you know? Yeah, it does seem like it actually ironically requires a lot of maintenance. That's a lot going on right there. You know, girls, you got a little something you can grab on, too. Y'all want to come to the show? Tulsa, Oklahoma. Come see me. Look at that. Yeah. I mean, it ain't that bad. I got a little bit on the front. I got a little. I got a little puff of cotton right there on the front. But look at that forehead, man. You could show a drive-in movie on that sucker. Wow. Look at that sucker. Got them ears stuck out there like a cab rolling down the street with the doors open, man. Look how little my hands are too. I got a little short hand. I got normal size palms. I got a little short fingers though. People love to talk about that. I got a giant penis. And like an ungodly ball sack. It's like ridiculously large. Not everybody in the world gets to see that, but some have. Well, I guess we can ask you this. So the, the DeSantis people have been freaking out over the boot thing. Yeah, he's as wearing a boot lifts. As a boot connoisseur, you can probably explain that a little better because I've never really worn boots of that nature. Well, so he's I got lifts on. He's wearing lifts. Yeah, um, right. And so they've actually asked some, some boot manufacturers about that. They're like, yeah, no doubt he's, he's wearing lifts, which I don't understand. I think he's like 5'10", 5'11". He's not necessarily short. Not necessarily tall. He's average size. But he's got lifts because if you look, his feet are like walking in high heels. Yeah, yeah. In the boots. Don Trump Jr. shared a meme about it the other day in some videos. And uh-huh. I was like, I don't know why we make, make fun of somebody's physical stuff going on. But it is kind of funny about that. Like, I, yeah, I mean, whatever. I think- I think the reason it was funny was because the like the the DeSantis influencers online freaked out about it. Yeah, which kind of made it a thing. And then he was on with uh, he was on the podcast PBD podcast, and they tried to like give him a pair of boots, and he kind of freaked out about it. And it's like, dude, just take the boots and laugh about it. Yeah. That's all you have to do. I think that's the issue. It's like we're just being funny, man. No one cares if you're five nine. It doesn't matter. Well, I told you I was on the show. I was on Sean Spicer's show yesterday. And we were talking about this topic, and Sean was like, I'm five foot six. Like, I, when I, the first time I ever met Sean Spicer uh, was in the green room at Fox News in New York City. Uh-huh. We were both on the show that day. And uh, I was surprised at like, how short Sean was. I mm-hmm. knew he was short, but it's like, he's five, 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 six, something like that. And, uh, but a great dude. His personality lights up the room. He's kind of larger than life in that regard. And he's just a funny, funny guy. And I just enjoy Sean. Um, a lot. I don't think about his height. I don't think about anybody's height. CJ's dad, six foot nine. Woo. That's a height. That's a big fella. Yeah, that dude played basketball for Iowa and Baylor. I mean, that's six. That's a tall dude. Um, I was on a plane the other day with one of the old uh, Harlem Globetrotters. He he about six foot nine. 
big old boy. Like that's when I start thinking about you. Yeah, well, that's why I'm convinced Giants were real. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw Yao Ming in person. And I was like, okay. Yeah, you're trying what, to tell me Yao two? Ming we're the same species. Yeah, okay. Yeah, like seven two, something like that. He's like he's so, he's so tall that he made Shaq look short. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Woo! Ah, I'm six feet tall. Six feet tall. Somewhere there's an internet search out there. Somewhere it says I'm five eleven. We got to get that fixed. Yeah, I got to scrub that shit. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Scrub that shit, man. Yeah, that's libel. Scour the internet. Six feet tall. <laughs> six one in boots. Six three in, six, three in Ron DeSantis. In, in Ron DeSantis. <laughs> yeah. In Ron DeSantis world, I'll be six foot three. <laughs> Guys, health revelation that'll change your life. Listen up. This is the modern age. It's more important than ever to take care of your liver. Yeah. Why should you? Uh, because your liver is a powerhouse with five key functions that greatly affect how you look, how you feel, everything in your health, uh, weight management, energy levels, cholesterol, hormone health, brain health. The problem is we have an epidemic in this country. And uh, if you were to add up all the residents of South Carolina, Indiana, Massachusetts, Arizona, Virginia, Florida, and Texas, you would still not get the 100 million Americans that have a fatty liver in this country. It makes you gain weight, experience chronic fatigue. Even if your liberal neighbor has it, don't start being a liberal take care of your health okay try the product that i recommend liver health formula all natural supplement packed with clinically proven botanicals help you recharge protect your liver uh if you go to my dedicated page you'll get a free bottle of nano powered omega-3 that'll help with your heart okay that's a 60 64 percent discount on all, everything there get liverhelp.com do this i take it family takes it get liverhelp.com slash chad that's get liverhelp.com slash chad be right back Yo, Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm at the Looney Bin all weekend long. Come see me. Watch Chad.com where the fun stuff is. Next week, Wichita, Kansas. District 249 in Tomball, Marble Falls. That's going to be the week after that. Going to be in uh, at the Mule Barn up in Justin the day after Thanksgiving. That's going to be a good town. Then some small towns in Texas. You know them. Yorktown, Kerrville coming to do some music. Then we're going to be at the Little Rock Bit Looney Bin uh, in uh, December. And then St. Cloud, Florida, man, all kind of stuff going on. Sounds like money, money, money. But you got to show up or I don't get paid. <laughs> Watch Chad.com and uh, subscribe to The Blaze, blazetv.com slash Chad. Use promo code Chad. Don't forget to check out the all-new theblaze.com. Get all of your news, information, investigative journalism, your opinions, and your editorials. It is a lot of fun over there, and it's really cool, so check them out. And if you're not yet, follow me on social media on X and on Instagram at WatchChad. I'm reaching 30, almost 30 million new accounts, unique accounts on Instagram every 30 days. That many people can't be wrong. They love me. They love me, Ma. Tune in for overtime tomorrow. We love you. Have a great weekend. Talk to you on Monday. Bye.